Welcome back. Many thanks for staying with us. What a discussion we're having this morning. We're talking about drawing the red line. Government yesterday announcing tough new measures to curb political tensions, but some feel this could be used to censor free speech, freedom of association as well. And we've been hearing from uh, legal minds and from the political world as well just before the break. But now we also want to include the voice of the church, understand a little bit about the week that's been with discussions around the voice of the church in 2020 uh, and what Kenyans can expect as three days of prayer begin tomorrow as called for by President Uru Kenyatta. Joining us uh, for this discussion on phone from Mombasa uh, County, I believe, is Archbishop Martin Kivuva, Mombasa Catholic Diocese. Archbishop, thank you for finding time for us this morning. I trust you can hear me? I can, Maura. I can hear very loud and clear. Great. I believe that uh, for you as clergy, this week, especially from Sunday, has been a time of soul-searching, a time of reflection. What are your thoughts, not just on the state of the nation, but also the state of the church and the church's place in the nation? What would you say to that? Um, first of all, thank you for having me, and thank you for the opportunity to speak to our situation in this country. Remember, we are also Kenyan citizens for that. So whatever happens to our people, to any one of us, we have a big, con a big concern. Of course, of concern is the, the place of worship, when it is invaded and perhaps becomes a reason for, uh, the, for, for conflict, it's sad. It's very, very sad. And more so when it becomes a place where people are not safe because we supposedly, the place of worship, whatever it is, in a mosque, in a temple, in a church, in any space that we call a worship is a place that people go to get solace. But as we all know, the... The, 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 the politicians are, are uh, incited, not incited, but uh, enticed by crowds of big numbers of people. And because of the fact that they, they have a place, uh, what you call a captive audience, this is a particular place they go. Um, my particular concern individually is that we have always and in insisted and also persisted, please let's come to church to pray. To pray. And when we come to pray, let's endow, uh, in, uh, behave in a manner that promotes unity, prayer, and an ambience that is, brings harmony to community. But now, this is what we, where we are looking at. But that is really our not, is just a concern about the events of this last week. However, let me look at the broader picture. Mm -hmm. The broader picture for me is that the church has walked with this nation from time of inception to the late to the last uh, elections what we had from the years of 1992 1997 2007 and recently 2017 mm -hmm. it has always been present but play, praying and the, playing the role of a dialogue uh, uh, process to bring the, the warring parties or the the different parties on a round table to listen and reason together. In the last few weeks and the last few years now, mm -hmm. since 2017, we, we endeavor to bring uh, not just church, we're talking clergy of all faith mm -hmm. in a dialogue table. And we were trying to bring everyone to reason together, knowing whatever goes wrong, we are all impacted upon, okay. whether we belong to a Muslim community, whether Hindu community. And therefore, it is in our, in, our, in our wish that we can reason, sit down and do reasoning together. Of Bishop, course, politicians... I, 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 and I'm sorry for interrupting you. I want to ask you something ahead. before I allow the other panelists to uh, respond. Yesterday Go we ahead. had a, you know, a press briefing by the Evangelical Alliance of Kenya. Yes. Are, the strong message that I got from it was they were asking pastors, priests, religious leaders, take charge of your pulpits. That's exactly what Almost I was Almost as if a situation of because this is getting out of hand. What would you say to that? I totally agree. I totally agree. We, we, we should not allow the abuse of the place of prayer. Okay. Because that is for me calling an abuse of place of prayer. Mm -hmm. If we come, people, people come with all kinds of pains and aches of all nature. And they are coming to get solace. And instead, somebody is dead. It's not fair. And two, 
the main reason why we are, sometimes people are, are, are enticed to allow politicians to speak and recognize them is their leaders. We say, okay, in our meetings, we have our leaders. Let's applaud them, let's accept them, and that is it. But when you politicize the pulpit, when we become the place to attack the other member or the other member, mm-hmm. now we, we lose it out. We have lost it. So it is in our, in our uh, opinion, that not just opinion, it is historical reason from even time of a memorial tradition of communities. A place of prayer was a reverent place. You didn't go to bring your whatever you have to or, um, uh, or, or have a, bring your conflict with your neighbor. So it is right. I agree with, totally with them. And I say, let's be, take charge. Whatever we are, that we do not allow, we do not accept the, 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 the kind of uh, abuse of the place of prayer. And okay. I know our politicians are reasonable people. I believe that. They are also members of our churches and mosques and places of prayer. Ak- so ak- yes. I, I, I cannot understand what goes wrong when they see a crowd. <laughs> Right. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mora. Uh, Archbishop, you, 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 I like your optimism, and I don't know whether the fellow, fellow panelists share the same optimism that uh, the political class is a reasonable one. Uh, many say it's driven by interest, and sometimes that goes beyond reason. But let's get quick reactions, and then, Archbishop, I'll come back to you to get expectations uh, in terms of that prayer day on uh, Saturday that Kenyans will be watching live from State House. Uh, Steve Agola, let me start with you. Get your thoughts on uh, the faith discussion, the religion discussion that's been on this week in the country. Uh, First of all, I'm a born-again Christian, but I do not support the idea of relying or resorting to prayer to solve common sense problems. Mm-hmm. But the problems you are having in this country are about the creation of decency, good manners, and discipline. No amount of prayer will renovate our culture. I mean, these are just decisions you make at an individual level, at a family level, at a community level, then at a national level. If you are meeting to pray, we can be meeting to pray for unity when we know in our heart of hearts we deepen conversations that divide us. And I have a problem with the church. The church is for sure part of the problem and it needs to do a lot of soul searching and I say this because I am also part of the church as a born again Christian believer. Why come How come the church in Nyanza, for instance, is entirely supportive of the Right Honorable Prime Minister Raila Odinga? And how come the church in Central is fully committed to the cause of Uhuru Kenyatta or whatever regional leader that they have there? How come the church in Rift Valley will forever ordain and pray for the Deputy President William Ruto and so on and so forth? I think the church has not done so well to disentangle itself from regional politics. Is it because of the kind of support it gets from the congregation? Or is it because there are other collateral benefits the church gets from the political leadership? But I think when all is said and done, mm-hmm. the church must repent and the church must return to the higher ground where it can even deny. And I can say this because I attend All Saints Cathedral. I saw the people there, the, right, the, the Reverend Sami Wainana, the burning political rallies. And you saw uh, Archbishop of Jackson or Lesa Pitt saying very clearly that the Anglican Church will not entertain politicians in the pulpit. Then we saw the Catholic Church reiterating the same message. But now we need to follow up. Has the Anglican Church where I belong and the Catholic Church, have they followed up in the periphery to ensure that our priests and our pastors in rural churches comply with the directives coming from Nairobi. Because the Anglican church in Uganda is intensely political. The, the, the Catholic church in Uganda is intensely political. Because they welcome, see, the county women, the, 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 the constituency MP, the ward leader, okay. the senator, are all politicians from the same ethnic community. So when they come to these pulpits, the church sometimes, instead of calling them out, tolerates them. And that tolerance is what is now deepening the friction that we are seeing right now. And we must say it as it is, Waiga. You, you've taken us down a very interesting path, Steve Ogol, and, and I'll allow the Archbishop to respond a, a bit later on. Let's hear from the others. Uh, Joy, um, Divo, let's come to you. And an uh, interesting one here. Steve Ogola says uh, prayers 
not enough. Common sense must also apply. But if you talk to clergy, the clergy will say, the law, some of them might say, the laws are not enough. Morality cannot be legislated. It must be an issue of the heart. What do you make of these different perspectives of what really can create a better Kenya for us all? I'll start by making the same declaration that Steve has made, that I am a born-again believer. I'm a practicing Christian. And I am also of a different persuasion than Steve is. <clears throat> the days when Father Keza and uh, Bishop Muge and others were involved in politics, they were hailed as heroes at that time. Nobody said the church should stay out of politics. They were happy to accept such political activity as long as it was of a certain flavor. And now that church involvement is of a different flavor, all of a sudden then it ought to be castigated. My persuasion is actually different. Church needs to get very involved in the politics of the day, not because um, the church, no, now I'm talking about the church, the congregants, because the church people are the ones who produce, it's a society that produces our leaders. If the only interaction we have with our politicians is when they're coming to give us money, then we can expect that our politicians have bought our participation. But if we're intentional about pastoring our politicians, mentoring them, working to them day by day and in developing uh, relationships, then I don't see how that is a problem. The thing that we join issue is on the use of the pulpit for politicking. On that one, I'm very much behind what Archbishop has said and what Steve has said. Because when somebody comes and desecrates the sacred place of prayer and the, sacred, the place where we receive our religious instruction and starts using it for something else, then I have a problem with that. But in terms of the church being involved in what is happening politically, surely it is almost expected. How else are we going to speak into the issues of the day if we as a church choose to remain aloof to what is happening politically? So I'm of the persuasion that the church needs to get involved in politics. Christians should look amongst themselves and see good leaders and put them up and support them to run for office. Because what good is it to see people running for office who you know are rogues, then when they go there you spend your time praying for them to become saints. That is the common sense that Steve is talking about. If you're going to have somebody of integrity standing, it is because you have nurtured them, groomed them, supported them, campaigned for them, and ushered them into leadership. So like, if Langata is going to be Mbele Pamoja, I'm assuming the congregants who are living in Langata will assist somebody of integrity to be Mbele to Pamoja with them. And that is why sometimes when we have a blanket condemnation of Church should not be involved in politics. I'm like, look, you were happy for the blood of uh, bishops to be spilled when we're in the clamor for multipartism. And now that they're engaging in shuttle diplomacy with the handshake and this uh, uh, inter-religious prayer, because the church is still involved, but now it's a different flavor of involvement. Then now all of a sudden, church should not be involved. We see other religions also being active in the political space. But for some reason, we keep picking on Christians when they get into politics. I find it ridiculous. So my thought in this is, as believers, we are still part of the society. Okay. We must get embroiled in politics. But the pulpit should be left sacred. And if the police interference in places of worship must be nuanced with the pulpit is a sacred place. <coughs> Okay, th th thank you for that. Uh, let me come to you, Honorable Amalwa. And uh, you know, in previous years, Honorable Amalwa, obviously you having followed the history of this country uh, and the part you play now in Parliament, you know that the church was known to be a strong critic of the state and the wider political class. You know, they played a critical role in the push for multi-party democracy, uh, justice, social welfare, and so forth. But that seems to be one outreach arm that no longer functions as vibrantly, as publicly as it used to. Do you have your concerns about this, even as we, uh, you know, await those three days of prayer starting tomorrow? Thank you. Thank you very much. First and foremost, I want to declare uh, that... Uh, Many declarations today Archbishop. on the program. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, that uh, his, his grace, uh, Archbishop Martin Kivuva, is uh, my spiritual leader. I'm the chair of the Catholic Members of Parliament. And we subscribe to the church teachings. And I want to agree what uh, Archbishop said. Actually, the church is supposed to provide solace, is supposed to provide comfort, and we go to church to look for uh, comfort. And when you go to church, we must humble ourselves. If I go to church, we should not be treated like politicians or whatever the status. We go there like any other congregants. And uh, the Catholic Church, for example, I want to say, and it happened uh, over the weekend, I was in Transvaal County, had been invited for a harambe to construct a Catholic church. 
in Kwanza constituency, Marinda Parish. And uh, because I was leaving to catch a flight, I spoke and I gave my uh, contribution. But when I left, we were told the other politicians who were invited did not respect uh, the pulpit. And the priests stood up and said, no, if you are here, you are not allowed to politic. You are not as allowed to uh, provide a head statement, insightful, and all that. So I think it is a responsibility of the pastors, of the priests, to take care and to take charge of the proceedings in charge. If you recognize a leader, you know, remember the Bible says, all leaderships come from God. And if, I, if, if they've recognized a leader that the president is here, or let's say the MP, the member of parliament is here, I don't think it's anything wrong. But if you are given an opportunity to say hi, you know, as a politician, you must differentiate. <coughs> when you're in church, whatever you say, you must be very careful. And even the way you dress when you go to church is totally different because this is a holy place and you should not politicize. You should not uh, attack other people or maybe provide some head speech or insightful uh, m messages. So I want to thank the church what they've done, but I want them to pull up their socks because as you clearly put, uh, first we want to salute the fallen heroes, the Mwana Onzeki, the Archbishop Mwana Onzeki. If you look at uh, his strength, he has been on the front line of uh, maybe providing oversight of the church, Father Kaiser, Bishop Muge. These are some of the heroes, even uh, the Archbishop Gitari, uh, what he did. I've, I've, I've followed up, and the church is there to provide oversight. Where the government has done wrong, they should say, yes, you've done wrong. If a politician has done wrong, you should tell your congregant, whether he's a member of parliament, whether he's an MCA, okay. that here you've gone wrong. Let the way you brought up Waigua is that uh, the do's and the don'ts we learn from the church. The moral standards we learn from the church. So the church should pull up their socks in terms of providing uh, good moral values for the leadership and also for the congregants. Uh, let, me, let me ask you this. Accusations against the political class that they look for uh, you know, possibly independent church groups that might not be financially stable and uh, use their financial resources to campaign, quote unquote, within those, uh, within those churches. What do you say to that, Honorable Amalwa? Big concern today in the nation that that's what's happening. Briefly tell me that. Now, now when we look at the church in this country... And the political class. I want you to talk about you as a yes. politician. Yeah, churches are not funded. And uh, when you go to a church, let's say they need a, a public address system, or they're building a church, they want to do the roofing, and uh, they have to get this money from the congregants. So I don't think there's any problem, because if the church was being funded in this country, let's say they are funded from the state, they'll not be calling politicians here for harambes. Remember, the church supports some families which don't have uh, anything to eat. During corona time, I visited a Catholic priest, and when I went to his, his, uh, his house, he had one kg of sugar, and there were 10 mamas who had come. And I saw him taking the one kg he had to give to the poor, to the poor mamas who had come to beg. So they, there's a lot that is required from the church, from the society they live in. People think when they go to church, they'll get food. And when you go to church, there are no seats. People need to sit. When you go to church right now, they don't have sanitizers. They don't have thermoguns. So I don't see anything wrong for the church to appeal to those who are willing to give. Okay. Maybe for purposes of filling the activities of the church. But you should not take advantage. That now the church has come to you for Harambe, you take advantage to politicize or to go there as if you've bought that the bonga, bonga points, you want to, to advance your, your politics. Politics should be shut from the church. When you're in the church, you should be holy and should conduct yourself within the teachings of the church. But if you go in a way and start inciting the congregants or being abusive, then the pastor who is responsible or the priest who is responsible should take charge and okay. deny you from speaking to the congregants. Thank you, Honorable Amalwa, for that. Although there are those who say that the issue is when you play holy in church and then do something different when you leave for the rest of the week. But that's a story for another day. Kiprono uh, Abraham Kogo is saying, again, demanding too much from religious groups or the church is wrong. We can't expect them to play the role of the opposition. It should serve the government and opposition together for better governance for the country. Archbishop Kivuva, a lot has been said. I don't know what you want to address. I don't know what I, your thoughts are as you've heard from uh, the other guests. I hear you. I hear you, Maura, and thank you for having this discussion. We can go on until tomorrow morning. But the reality is society is formed of all members between mm. 
good and the bad, and we try to work towards improving each other's uh, well-being in whatever form, socially, politically. Our politics are still growing, and unfortunately, we still have not got out of this trap of uh, tribe. We have never got now this uh, tri uh, of party. We are looking at our party member. We are looking at our tribe man or woman. So instead of saying, we're even, I'm, I'm, being, I'm looking for leader in any place, I don't look at a tribe. I look at who has capacity, who has, the, who has the heart for the people. However, apart from that, uh, let me mention this, uh, Maura, that um, the, the present scenario we have in the country, if the church is one element, there is Muslim, there are Hindus, there are other people. Mm. So we have a forum that we have tried to walk with this nation. And I say this uh, national dialogue, we call Dialogue Reference Group, which has been formed and since 2016. We try to bring people on board to think as one, as Kenyans, mm. as people who have everybody at heart. It is not easy because we are coming from fragmented tribes who only have to think about our people here only. The bigger picture is, if you have a president, it's not for a particular corner of the country. He is a president for all. Mm. If you have a politician in an area or a, a leader or a governor in a place, he must be a politician and a governor for everyone in that place, particular place. But we have fallen short in terms of tribe, uh, family. We have seen all the kind of corruption issues. Eh? I mean, this country is, is, uh, is bleeding, if we, we, let me tell you. It's bleeding out of that kind of a, what I call a disease of mimeocytes. Me, me, myself, and my family. Mm. And that's not very fair. <laughs> Secondly and thirdly, I think we, we mm. have a very big responsibility, even as a government, to encourage what I call civil, civic education. Mm. You see, the church is always, always called, come and quell the fire. And when the fire is done, they go back and say, you, your place is a, is a pulpit. Go and touch the Bible. Don't, this is politics. Mm. We are also political in a way, but we are not party politicians. We want the good of everyone. An archbishop quoted called Elder Kamara asked, he said, when I give people food, they call me a saint. But when I ask, why are they hungry? Why don't they have food? Then they say, it's politics. This is not that the case. When the church asks, why is it our corrupt, uh, our, there's so much corruption in this country? And especially starting from the bad example of leaders, eh? people in high places. And this has been why Kenyans have refused to, they, they, they think you're, we are joking. They say, Atai Corona ni biashara. You know, you hear they say that. Mm -hmm. Corona aiko. We know it is there, but they, they read more because of the body language. They read more by this bad example. So I'm encouraging my political class, my uh, faith-based people, whatever you are, whatever we are, we become examples, good mod role models. Because without real good role models, even in the family setting, you cannot even discipline your own children. You're telling your mm -hmm. children, and you come in the morning. At, at and they're saying that just... Uh, I'm just saying that because I think uh, we, we have yeah. a great opportunity. We have a great nation. Mm. The prayer we are talking about oh, that's going to take place is not unique. We are always praying. As people, every Sunday, there are those who pray on Friday, there are those who pray on Saturday, there are those who pray on Sunday. So it's, 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 it's unique only that it is set aside on to inviting everybody to think about this country. But more so, we should pray or really what I call conversion and change of heart. There's so much uh, stealing and cheating and whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. There's so much uh, what I call unfaithful uh, stewardship of our resources. Mm. So, and start from there. And then what do you expect other people to do? Okay. And if the leadership itself is, 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 is wanting, the, the electorate will also say, okay, we don't care also. Okay. So we really have a problem, and I think we need the prayer because okay. even mm. I say this as I wind up, uh, Maura, mm. it is not an individual matter. It's a collective responsibility, okay. media included, okay. I and you included. Mm. Yes. 
Okay, Thank let me get this. reactions from, uh, let's start now, with you, Steve. Steve, as uh, the, you know, the president announced three days of prayer starting tomorrow, and we know that the religious leaders um, you know, from all backgrounds will be gathered at State House uh, uh, probably, I mean, not probably, on Saturday. We've been told from 10.30 a.m. What, uh, and, and some Kenyans are saying today, beyond prayers, what the religious leaders will say to the political class is very important. What do you hope to hear as Steve Ogola on Saturday? Uh, I would not, as a matter of principle, devalue the place of prayer, but I would expect that the church would speak truth to power and not to massage the political interest of these uh, our leaders. If the church is cornered to a position where they cannot speak truth to the political elite, then the country will gradually slide into anarchy. We need to have the church that is firm, that is strong. So we expect that during the prayer session, that prayer should take the usual format that what happens in our churches. When we go to church every Sunday, we pray for spiritual nourishment. We receive training and teaching on the proper uh, foundation or doctrination of what a Christian should be. How can the church and the gospel shape our character and our conduct? And how can we be in the overall, be mindful of our neighbor's interest? How can we limit what comes out, what is within our control, the harmful effect of what our actions are? But if the prayer session is about ordaining and condoning uh, uh, ethnic leaders or regional kingpins, then I think it will not have the intended desire of uniting the country. Because we have seen before, in our national prayer breakfasts, or our national prayer meetings, leaders speaking with unity and one voice. But when they leave the prayer meeting and they retreat to their regional bases, they speak a different tone it makes you wonder the purpose of even having that prayer meeting in the first place. But Wega Maura, just what, what is really my point of concern, mm -hmm. and I pray that uh, the bishop would address this. The church in Central, the church in Nyanza, the church in Western Kenya, the church in the coast, is so much deep in local politics that they are unable to call out those regional leaders. Why do they give the platform to the local MP? the local senator, the local uh, governor. You know, just because you come from the same ethnic community and sometimes even the bishop and the pastors come from that community, you hear them tolerating conversation that we are sending our son and we pray and bless you that God may go ahead of you to capture this thing. You know, that conversation is not inclusive and is not helping us move together as a country. So if the bishop can continue speaking to it and maybe the prayer the national prayer meeting can speak to it that whatever we say in Nairobi should match what we do in the periphery, which means the ground where the, the people are. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, and I'll give him a chance to respond uh, 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 to, 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 to the, Unless you respond very quickly. Maura. Yes, briefly, please. Ma, ma, yeah, go ahead. Oh, is that Chris? No. No, it's me, Maura. Well, I, I, I'm very uncomfortable with what Steve Ogola is saying because... Uh, I've gone to Nyanza, they've prayed for me. I've gone to Sendra, they've prayed for me. I don't come from those areas. Just like what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7. He who prays is given. And we salute His Excellency the President for recognizing the power of prayer, the power of God. We have a president who recognizes God. So we cannot criticize prayers. And when the church leaders pray for us, they pray for our desires. So maybe Ogola should go there to be prayed for for success, success of uh, his law firm. Maybe that's what he wants. But you cannot come and condemn and say that, that uh, when you go to Nyanza, they are praying for the leaders from Nyanza. They go to Nyanza. When you go to Western, I think that is totally wrong. The preachers, the pastors, the priests are there to pray for us to achieve our desires. They are there to tell us this is good and this is bad. I think for Steve Ogola to come and say, insinuating that there's pretency in prayer, that is very wrong. And me as an individual, as a politician, as a Christian, Remember that politicians are also Christians. We have politicians who are bishops, who are pastors. First, we thank the president for recognizing the power of God and calling upon this national prayer. Before Corona, immediately Corona started, I was among the people who went to State House. We had prayers. I saw people kneeling. We saw the Muslims there. We saw the all sorts of denominations there praying. 
And we thank God, the infection has gone down. The positivity rate has gone down. So we can't come and pretend <clears throat> here, and I'm very sorry for my friend Steve Ogola, to say that there's pretense in the church. I think uh, that is totally wrong. They always pray for our desires. If you want to be a governor, so be it. If you want to be a successful lawyer and you've been prayed for, so be it. But you can't come and condemn the church and say the church, there's pretense. I, I think I, I totally disagree with the, those allegations of Steve Ogola. Thank you. Okay, my, my goodness. Maybe, uh, maybe, Joy... I, maybe I add one item there. It's, 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 oh. I don't think we are saying uh, it's wrong to pray. We are saying, um, we are saying that our, even our good Bible says, they pray for your leaders. Okay, we pray for all needs. Every day we pray. But there are moments when you decide things are intense. We need to strengthen our prayers. Even like, for example, if you are riding uh, in a bus, and something happens, you see him going down a cliff, mm -hmm. you definitely shout, oh my God, oh my God. But you, why did you not shout before? There's always moments <laughs> that God brings in your hand mm. to sh sh mind you, remind you his presence. And that is any human being, and we are human beings, has that option. And he has the, the, the relationship with a God who is able to change the course of, 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 of even a river. Or a, car, uh, or a calamity, or whatever. So, <coughs> personally, I would say, let's people pray. And this, since this particular time, it has been dedicated to be done that way. Does it means wherever you and I are, we don't have to call all of us to stay down. Those who are able to do, they do it on our behalf. And whatever any one of us, it's just a reminder. It's like all of us in the Catholic Church have moments. For example, it's the month of October. Okay. We pray for a particular intention. Other Muslims on Friday, they have a particular intention. So we, 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 we are saying, and I think this is where uh, the discussion is good, but also saying, let's leave what we say. The, we become role models. I keep saying that because um, and it should be, we should have our consciences pricked because we, we, we are falling short, for sure, uh, Maura. Mm -hmm. we, we are falling short as a nation in terms of we, 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 we claim to be a god fearing, but what we do majorly, there are very many good people, I'm not saying there's something wrong, but we are saying we need to keep checking ourselves. Are we in the right path? Where are we going? Okay. So it's, it's a, it's a wake-up call on this particular moment because there's a, I call it an Oduma's Day or something like that, but more so the country is going through a very serious crisis. When the bishop in October last year and also the president came up and they, we, we discussed things we need to be looking at. We still are far from sorting them out, the Constitution and the BBA, what are they suggesting? Uh, the, the, the poverty of the people have even gotten worse okay. due to the COVID and other matters, no mm. jobs and so on. Mm. And I, I must admit, uh, it, we always have, we, we have to look on, I call it, uh, on the, 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 the superior being for all of us support. We're not just praying for the president. We're oh. praying for all and everyone in need. Okay. At a forum where we can also participate either remotely or psychologically too. Okay, and, Archbishop. Yeah, yeah. Thank oh, you. All right. Thank you. And, I, and I'll give you another chance to weigh in. But Joy, you, you heard that back and forth between uh, Honorable Chris Wamalo and uh, uh, Steve Ogola. Uh, what's your take? Help us find a way forward. Now, th this is when I, I must give my spiritual uh, credentials. Eh? I am a firm believer that authority comes from God. And this took me to the story of Jonah. If you read the book of Jonah from chapter 1 to about chapter 4, you will see the, the place of the church and the king in dealing with an epidemic. Now, Jonah was sent to speak to the king, and he was afraid to say what the king needed to hear because he was afraid that God would change his mind. But you see God punishing Jonah for his disobedience, which I think sometimes men of God, um, the Lord deals with them because of not handling the holy things the way they're supposed to. But when Jonah obeyed and went and talked to the people of Nineveh and the information got to the king, then the king called upon the people in the land and told them, you know what, let everybody fast and pray, lest the Lord would be able to turn this fierce anger away from us. And I think that's what the president has done in this instance. There's a pestilence in the land. There's a pandemic in the land. There is issues that are bedeviling us. And the president has spiritual authority as well as 
authorities that he has um that is given by the constitution when god puts you in a place he also gives you the spiritual authority to call for such prayer now you will notice again and there's a reason and, i'm going the book of Nunes, and because I, and I apologize people... joy for interrupting you but what about those who say that yes we have a pandemic that we're dealing with that needs prayer but a longer term political pandemic is our bigger it, issue so, that is so address part of the that, issue. that address is that as you discussion. as you Sorry speak joy <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> yes. hold on joy go ahead <laughs> <laughs> with, the, with the president calling for the prayers, I don't think he was calling only for the corona pandemic because that, as uh, Honorable Amalwa has pointed out, is sort of getting under control. You remember that the religious leaders of recent past have also issued various communication to the president saying, you know what, something needs to happen with the political temperatures in this country. I belong to the Evangelical Alliance and I know we have sent memoranda. The interreligious uh, leaders met the president about two weeks ago, and the message has been the same. Do something to quell these temperatures. So in calling for three days of prayer, I wish I had gone as far as even saying three days of prayer and fasting. And of course, those of us who are mm. more spiritually minded might actually throw a fast in for good measure, mm. such mm. that it doesn't matter, like in the book of, of Jonah, it doesn't matter who you call to, as long as you're calling in sincerity. God is going to hear us. Now, if you're not a very spiritual person, this may look like an exercise in futility. But like I said, as a believer, I understand that the president just doesn't have to balance politics. He doesn't have to just balance law. He also must balance the spirituality. And what I'm, I'm hoping after these three days is going to happen is that, like Steve said, it would just be the window dressing of we had a national prayer, that there will be a further conversation about even changing the trajectory of our conversation such that we don't blow hot and cold from the same mouth. Because if you're talking about going before the Lord piously in prayer, then the Bible talks about sackcloth and ashes and humility in such situations. Even for the king, he would take off his royal robes and take the same posture. After the prayers he said and done, I wish our politicians, and, and I'm calling on Honorable Wamalwa to rally his colleagues. You guys need to just go shut yourself up in one room Say sorry to each other. Say, by the way, you know what, this is nonsense. Let's not do this anymore. And let us actually see a change of heart responding to the prayers. Because it would be useless for us to pray and cry loudly, but it is lip service. Then at the end of the day, next week, we go back to the def default settings. Okay. So I really welcome this call to prayer. But I'm hoping that in furtherance to the call to prayer, the president will take the next step, not just as a religious leader now, but as a political leader, to do something to pull everybody back together. That's okay. what we need in this country. Okay, thank, thank you for that. Let me read some feedback, then I'll get uh, final thoughts from each of you. Um, we've got, I've got a lot of uh, 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 tweets uh, as well. Uh, let me see what we're saying here. Abdullahi Bash is saying, prayers are a personal virtue. Kenyans don't need prayers from politicians who it is alleged have plundered resources and are abusing poor youth by taking advantage of their status or put uh, forward policies for 24 million Kenyans who are poor to work. Okay, I'm told we have tweets we can actually project. Let's put them up. Okay, this is what uh, Kenyans are saying this morning. J. Juma 13 says, Kenyans need the reincarnation of clergymen like Ndingi Mwananzeki and Bishop Muge, men that will not allow defilement of the pulpit while calling out politicians for their wrongdoing. Okay. Um, ben Omwando, why should a, a faithful politician from one belief be invited for a funds drive in another? The money politicians give are in exchange for airtime. The problems are the negative things they say. Politics is a PR profession. Okay, Coco Jumbo says, I support Steve Ogola. There's pretense in those prayers that will happen. Okay. Uh, Jenga Wa Congo, the consciousness of today's church is dead. Majority, if not all of them, are money oriented, which has diminished church value in the eyes of society. Church must go back to the drawing board, shape itself up in character and values. Okay. Kiprono Abraham 1, again, demanding too much from the church is wrong. We can't expect them to play the role of opposition. It should serve to the government and opposition together for better governance of the country. And one last one. Um, Monica Mugo, you say, note this. Church cannot, be, cannot step aside or be separated from politics. We check politics. However, politics should not at any point be allowed to penetrate the sanctity and authority of the church. Okay.
Um, while my guests reflect on those tweets, and I'm also expecting a few SMSs, we're taking a break, we're coming back, we're, I'm going to give them each a minute to summarize this discussion for us. You're watching Daybreak, stay with us. Remember, our SMS line is 2242. I want to see some SMSs as well. We'll be right back.